let me please go over how to set up very simple full contour crown using Hyperdent. Typically, Hyperdent will have a regular clamp, which we call it O clamp. Please select load blank. And just please go ahead and click new in order to generate a new type of restoration. If you're if you're bring your old blanks, then please go ahead and select open. Then you will be able to recycle some of the blanks that you were using before. By looking at the preview photos, you'll be able to determine which block that you're you're, uh, you're trying to use it again. Also, we are writing this down so that we know uh, which block it is from the physical block. On the side of the zirconia blank, if you can use Sharpie to write down, uh, it'll be much better because any letters on the top of the top of the zirconium, after the machine mills, it'll disappear. So sometimes you might not know what kind of shrink is height or size of the zirconium that you were using it before. So uh, make sure using Sharpie right on the side of the zirconia blank. This time, I'll go ahead and select new. And under material, we can select different type of materials. For this time, we'll select zirconium. After selecting zirconium, you'll be able to select different heights. Usually, with the single restorations, it fits mostly on zirconia disk height 16. So I'm going to select 16. And make sure you write down your scaling factor, which is a shrinkage factor. It can be 1.24 or 1.25 and also some of the zirconium blocks have different shrinkage factor for x y z so you can also write those down depending on the shrinkage given by the manufacturer but this time i'll select uniform scaling of 1.24 under the blank identification there is a name to enter in here, you can enter uh, what kind of uh, the information that you want to write down for you to know uh, how to keep the blank for the future reference. So for me, I'll just write 14. Uh, in our zirconia, we have MMT and MMT plus. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter MMT. And uh, typically, I also put shrinkage factor, so I'll just put that and usually date of blank that I am creating because sometimes uh, you might have same type of blanks that you can use today and tomorrow. So this is another way of differentiating uh, blocks from another blocks, but you can always feel free to enter whatever information uh, that you want to write down. This is just for you to know uh, how to find out which blank that you're using and which blank you'll be wanting to use in the future. So please go ahead and enter OK. Then the computer will generate the blank. It's hard to see right now, but uh, let me get rid of, let's go ahead and select the fixture and select hide selected then it will get rid of the fixture then you're able to look at the blank okay so you can zoom in and out and rotating by clicking on the right button from the mouse but a lot of times it's hard to set exactly where you want to put it. 
So I utilize this top view a lot of times. And I use the zoom all a lot too. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, import the crown by selecting load part. Let's go to single crown and I'll show you the sample. And in this case, you can do preview and it will also show you the height that it will require for you to mill this restoration. And it's showing as 11.55 millimeter. And under the type, it's selected as crown but you can choose different type of restoration. Sometimes, it's, uh, sometimes you can choose it as crown, but you can also select coping. But this is how you are selecting from your ExoCAD or 3Shape. So if you select crown from the 3Shape, then it will select it as crown. But a lot of times, it might show you as coping, that's because you don't have this file construction type called 3SFM file. From 3Shape, you need to have 3SFM file for Hyperden to understand uh, what restoration you're trying to mill. Also from ExoCAD, you need to have a construction info file in order for Hyperden to also know what kind of restoration you're trying to mill. So, I'm just going to choose sample and click open. And the reason why we want to have those three SFM file and construction info file, because with those given files, the system will automatically mark the margin for you. And it will also keep all the insertion direction too. If you don't have three SFM file or construction info file, uh, you might have to manually select margin, insertion direction. And this typically takes, you know, your, your time. So I would highly recommend talk to your distributor and enable 3SFM file or construction info file. Okay, so from here, as you can see, I'm selecting uh, the top view and also front view in order for me to utilize where my crown is. So basically, you can double click, then you're able to move them. So I am left clicking and holding the crown and moving it. And make sure you don't wanna go beyond this boundary because this boundary represents where the physical fixture is. So you have to be careful if you go over this red boundary, what will happen is basically the machine will try to mill the fixture. So just bring this back in and bring the mouse cursor to the edge of the crown. Then it'll change the shape. Left click and hold and rotate. Then you'll be able to rotate them. Okay. And go to connector set connectors and click on it then the software will try to add sprue or connectors on the best area where it thinks it'll have the least undercut areas a lot of people ask me for anterior cases there could be some undercuts on the lingual side because when they design, they try to uh, have the, the cusp a little bit curved. So for those cases, if you look at the bottom right, there is show undercut area. If you enable that, then the system will try to bring the undercuts, but in this case, uh, it doesn't have much undercut, but uh, let me show you something. So I'm going to change 
the insertion direction. So by clicking the set milling direction, okay, I'm clicking the uh, the top view. Okay, so imagine if if my crown came out to be like this. I'm clicking on the occlusal, setting this viewing direction to be my occlusal direction. By the way, you're also able to double click on it. And if you click on the control, then you're also able to tilt like this. But a lot of times, this is very uh, difficult in my opinion. So if you have uh, bridges or full arches, then I typically utilize tilt part in blank. So in this, you're able to enter the angle that you desire and click on the maximum. Then the machine will try to tilt and try to put the bridges into the right place. Uh, so you can better utilize this. You can also enter uh, you know, from 0 to 30 degrees uh, just to maximize the automatic automatic tilting option. So it's the easiest. So after that, you're also be able to select templates. So please go to select templates. But each restoration type has very, has default template. In this case, it'll use two millimeter, one millimeter, 0.6 and 0.3. But if you don't want to utilize 0.3, you can always change and choose 0.6 millimeter template. Click accept and close it. Then you'll be able to click calculate to pass and it will, in order to start the calculation. But I want to show you a different type of restoration too together. So let's go to load part again. Go to crowns and another sample. If you look at this case, it's actually a crown going on top of custom abutments. So basically, this is a crown, but with the hole. So in this case, let me show you how you can select. So open. And you can double click and move. People ask me, is it okay to cross from each border lines? Uh, you don't want to physically touch the STL files, but if the border lines are just overlapping it, each other, then that's totally fine. But if you bring it like this, then it'll actually get cut out. So let's just have a little space and rotate, like how we mentioned. Okay. And go to connector and click. And it'll try to uh, connect them too automatically, but I don't want to have connectors on medial and distal areas. So I'm just going to delete them. Okay, and double click on this connector or screw. And you see it'll generate green line. So what this green line represents is the highest contour area to minimize undercut. So if I bring this to the green area, then I'm not going to have a undercut on top or bottom. But you see, if I bring this down, then it'll have uh, this much being undercut. Okay. So just bring it up and then click on the top view and bring, bring the uh, connector bar and I just bring it to the other side. Okay. And you notice there's a hole that we have to identify. So by clicking identify part features, go to holes, then you're able to select three dots. So first dot, second dot, and third dot. So it'll generate this channel. But a lot of times, if the channel looks a little weird, so 
it, when I look at this, it's not fully circle. So I'm just going to delete it and try to mark it again. Sometimes it's funny, you don't have to click on the cylinder directly. You can actually choose from outside. Then it actually selects the better channel. Selecting screw retain channel is very important because if the channel is too deep, then what happen, What will happen is it, uh, when the tool is going into that channel, uh, since it's too deep, uh, it might the tool might break. The tool might break the crown, and the tool also might be destroyed because all the zirconia gets piled into that screw access channel and basically machine doesn't really have a way to uh, go around so when we are doing a screw, the, the reason why we're identifying screw channel access is because if you select that then the machining strategy is a little bit different the, the tool will actually go in and out and in and out from that screw access channel so when the tool comes out then the uh, air will blow inside uh, for all the zirconium dust to disappear so actually the milling gets easier so don't forget to have a channel okay all right and when you have uh, more than one crown basically you have to select both of them so I'm, I click this and then click control and click the other one or you can just drag the mouse and select all of them or you can just select from this here just click all of them okay then you're able to calculate and be able to prepare a file for you to be able to send it to Roland and the Roland will start the job and milling those two restorations. And if you have other questions, please ask help from 3D Biocast support. Thank you.